Hey, I'm not so a strainer, and how's BDSP? Let's get into it. Today was a crazy day for many reasons. Not only did BDSP release officially in my country, but my pre-order was late, because of course it was. And that delayed everything I had planned for today. Basically, I'm now a proud owner of two copies of Brilliant Diamond, one that I still don't have, but pre-ordered and will be returning, and another one I got today. But while I wasn't able to play as much of the game as I wanted, I already have a few hours on it, and I'm here to give you my first impressions slash early review of the game. Remember, these are my thoughts and my thoughts only. So let's start! The first thing I felt when I finished updating and booted the game was the same wonder I feel every time I play a Pokemon game. The music is wonderful and this time it was a mix of the usual quality we've been used to and nostalgia. The remixes of the songs we've been listening to for 15 years are, as always, the best they could be. And that continued through all the hours I played the game, from soothing ones like the Eternal Forest to the sneaky galactic theme in Valley Windworks. Seeing Professor Rowan there welcoming us to a new adventure in the Sinnoh region was also just as amazing. As the game started and we were in a room, a smile came to my face as the movement started. That wasn't just nostalgia, that was a feeling of coziness that I've missed since Auras. I've always looked at the chibi art style as a homage to the pixel art style that made Pokemon such a special franchise, but actually playing it was a complete surprise. The game runs so smoothly and the art style is so vibrant that I have to say, as a faithful remake, when it comes to the visuals, this game does it perfectly for me. We all know the Pokemon franchise uses nostalgia as a very effective weapon and this one was just another great example of that. Every scene felt so familiar, yet so new, that even something I complained about before, like the transition between the overworld model and the battle model, didn't bother me at all. There were some weird things that I noticed when Barry was following us to the lake, and that was his super speed. Every time we changed direction, Barry would almost teleport right behind us, so basically they used the wrong Barry for inspiration here. Still, that was but a moment in the playthrough. Choosing Turtwig, I found myself having an easy battle against Rourke, not because of overleveling or anything, but because of type advantage. I actually didn't notice overleveling up until this point, and I was battling all the trainers. What surprised me was the battle against Mars. Since I wasn't really looking to add any of the early route Pokemon to my team, I had a team of Turtwig and Shellos when I got there, but thought it wouldn't be a problem. Well, I was wrong. Zubat hit me with a supersonic, outspeeding my Turtwig, and then with a U-turn bringing out an orange buried Perugly with Thief, just in case I had a berry myself. Not ashamed to say that I did lose the first one and was lucky that Zubat missed the supersonic on the second try. I also did notice a lot more use of stat dropping moves, which has been creating some pretty cool battles, preventing me from winning at lightning speed against some random trainers. The Poketch was also a lot less intrusive than I thought, being locked behind a really easy toggle with the R button. But the best part wasn't that, the best part was yet to come. That happened in Eternus City as soon as I got the Explorer Kit. The Grand Underground is surely the star of these remakes. It is huge and the hideaways look gorgeous, everything is so straightforward that you feel like you're sailing through exploration, mining and catching. I saw quite a bit of variety without even having a secret base and I barely scratched the surface of what was available to me. And that's where my progress stopped because I just can't find myself wanting to leave that place. So basically, I have a very positive experience so far with the games. Are they spectacular remakes? No, they're not. While remakes of the past went the innovation route, this one plays on the strength of the originals, while making sure to update what was outdated even for the time. What it offers is not the crazy new adventure with new features we had in Auras, for example, but the cozy feeling of going back to Pokemon as it was before the battle features became the norm. If you enjoy Diamond and Pearl and even Platinum, you will find a great adventure in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, one that will keep you entertained for quite a while, especially with the Grand Underground. So I don't really like giving games a score, I feel like enjoyment cannot be measured that way, so I'll just say, if you enjoy the pixel art style in Gen 4, you'll feel right at home in BDSP. At least that is my opinion so far, and I really don't see that changing that much. Anyway, have you been playing the game? How has your experience been so far? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, like the video if you like it, dislike if you don't, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content. Also, ring the bell so you know when the next video is out. You can follow me on social media, Twitch, I stream there Thursday to Sunday, or join our Discord. All the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.